Yeah, I mean, we're only like a minute late, but yep. uh, we should be live. So here you go. Okay. Well, look at here, man. I'm so glad that we're able to finally get to this day because sitting in a hotel room on Monday night and Tuesday afternoon, there's so many things I wanted to see and say and do about the Rose Bowl. Uh, emotions are all over the place. I shouldn't have been looking at Twitter and Instagram <laughs> and everything else just because it gets me fired up on what people say when they don't know what they're talking about. Um, and so we're glad that you're going to be in on Teague's Take, where we can give you a good analysis about what we saw uh, and try to back some of it up with film a little bit. You know, it's our job to be objective. Uh, we are Alabama people, and we do love our school and the football team. Uh, but there's some things that we want to show that we felt like we could have did a little bit better. Okay, so we got a very special guest on tonight. I'll introduce him after we get this thing going. Uh, I apologize if my voice starts cracking up um, a little bit because I don't know, maybe the travel and stuff got me going. I got me a little bit of hot tea while I'm going here. But what we're going to do, you know what we're going to do? We're going to start Teague's Take right now. Big shout out to everybody once again for being here with us. Yes, I do have some hotty toddy uh, things in my cup. Uh, maybe just to get over some of the stuff. I'm probably not sick. I probably just feel a little bit of sick because I really thought we had a good chance to win that game. A couple of big shout outs really quick. First, though, I need to say thank you to the Alabama uh, A Club. BJ Stavery do a tremendous job of getting all the former players together. It was great to see some of the former players before the football game. Got to see Derek Lassick. Uh, you know, spent some time with him, and there were many others. I saw Ephraim Thomas, man. It was kind of cool. I hadn't seen him since whew, way, way back when, so it was kind of cool to be able to do that. Thank you to the AD, Greg Byrne, for all that you do with helping us get situated at those games, particularly when you got a big one like this. So I am very thankful for that. Um, some other people that I'm really thankful for, of course, as always, my family. JT, I thank you for everything that you do. But we want to give a very, very special thank you to a company that has been supporting us and will continue to support us over the time. So, JT, if you don't mind, let's give a little shout out to Beaches LLC because this concept they have is very unique. Let's see if we can let it roll. All right. Or not. I didn't look like it's rolling. So um, give me a second. We will pay these bills. Um Let's do it like this. No. Well, you're gonna have to give me a second to troubleshoot because that one is that one's not pulling up for me. So if you want to bring in our guests, then I'll figure out what where that video went. We'll do that. Why don't you do that? I want to go ahead and. Uh bring in this very special person because, man, he's already fired up. He's been sitting in the back. We had a little pre-game, pre-show talk and doing some stuff. Um, but I need to tell you a little bit about this gentleman first um, because he's very intriguing. You know, so the way I kind of – we started to develop our friendship, and we don't talk about it enough. It's probably when we were actually doing some work for uh, the Under Armour uh, – Oh, yeah, was, you had a uh, camp out there. I remember we went one time. Well, I yeah. went one time out to Arizona. Yeah, we did a lot of stuff together right there. And he actually gave me the opportunity to come out there and work with them and meet some of the people and be around some very high-profile athletes. And so that was kind of my first stint of really getting around high-level football like that. And then I actually had him uh, come over and coach with me some, too, at Carrollton Christian Academy. I don't know if he helped us at Shelton. Um or not, but he does a lot of big things. We played together with the Dallas Cowboys. He won a Super Bowl um, there as offensive lineman. He's a, uh, really one of the largest human beings I've ever seen. We, we, we talk about Jonathan. <laughs> we talk about Jay Scott all the time, our friendly uh, offensive lineman from Texas, but uh, Big George is 
is just as big. And, you know, they're both just as athletic and have done tremendous things. He's also a tremendous motivator. If you ever need someone to come speak to your company or talk or something like that, you want someone that can keep the crowd moved. Uh, you want to talk to this gentleman as well. He's a businessman. Um, I know he's, he was trying to be an AD and then he went um, to work for the NFL Players Association. He spent five years with ING. We're looking forward to some stories he has to tell there as it relates to Alabama as well. But I like to call the man a friend outside of all that. So if you'll give a round of applause and go ahead and bring in Mr. George Hegeman. Yes, sir. Big ball. Nicely done. Big ball. Nicely done. Yeah, I can't remember how many miles you told me that you had to get from your house to North Carolina State because that was one of the most powerful <laughs> talks of the herd. One thousand something, 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 or another. Yeah. All I know, it was uh, really, really good. So how's it going, man? How you doing, big fella? Man, Teague, man, it's always good to be on with you, man. You know, and it's 1,271.8 miles, <laughs> uh, which is the exact distance from Camden, New Jersey, to North Carolina State to the Dallas Cowboys in the third round. Man, but I, hey, look, I'm better than I deserve, man. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. You guys make sure you give him a, a follow uh, as well. Why don't you go ahead and give him your uh, IG because you do a lot of great things there too and your Twitter handle. Yep, so both of them are George Hageman at George Hageman uh, is, is, is both of them, that and TikTok as well. Coach George. Coach George recommends on TikTok, George Hageman on IG and George Hageman on Twitter. All right, all right. Well, we do appreciate that. So, JT, whenever you're ready, you just interrupt and you tell me um, how we want to go with that because uh, I'm going to keep on trucking. Yeah, keep on trucking. Uh, keep going because uh, I might have uh, might have lost a little bit of data here, so that video might be missing. All right, no problem, no problem. Okay, so we are um, – the purpose of this show is to really be able to talk about the Rose Bowl – uh, we've been teasing about what are the three things on what we thought uh, the reason why we might lost why we've lost the game. We do have some film. We're going to have Coach George on here with us to really give down some in depth conversation of what was going on uh, with that. But I wanted to to point out a few things first that I thought was interesting. Uh, well, first of all, someone tried to come at me on Twitter, uh, a dude trying to he was talking about our last show and so we we're worried about our Michigan trollers that are always trying to get in and you know not like facts or stats and things of this nature and so they didn't necessarily like the way we were displaying some of the stuff which I think we were very fair with JJ McCarthy and uh, Blake Corum, Corum last week um, about it and so after the game of course you know put some respect on our people name and all this kind of stuff and I said man all we're doing is just giving you the stats that's out there that we're getting from reliable people and sources they're real we're not making it up sometimes we have opinions on this show but a lot of times we try to back it up especially with the analytical one James Teague he uh he always keeps it real with that so this was an even match and this is where I was going with. And you guys can listen to this. Um, the offensive plays were very, very close. Bama had 66. They had 59. Yardage ended up being pretty close. We had 288. They had 326. The yards per play were still kind of close. 5.5 for Michigan, 4.4. Neither one of us were good in third downs. We were 3 for 11. They were 2 for 11. They did have a little advantage in fourth down because they got both of those, right? Now, the passing yardage, they kind of whooped us a little bit, 221 to 116. Yards per pass, 8.25.0. <clears> we outrushed them, 181 to 132. But here's where I start to get into this, and I think George and JT can talk about this because it's well, before always – you get into that, mm -hmm. we got to pay the bills. We're going to go to the beach. Y'all really bills, need buddy. to – Y'all need to really pay attention to this because I, I didn't hear about this until recently, and I want one of these. I don't know if you can't, you can't even call it a pool. It's a pool, but it's not a pool. So y'all check it and out. And then when we get on the other side, Linda Derry has donated $5. She's got a question. Um, I don't know if we want to answer it right away, but I know we will answer it later on in the show. So let's do this first. Let me tell you about Beaches LLC. 
Yes, Beaches LLC is your source in the state of Alabama and the Florida Panhandle for exquisite quartz sand beach pools by Biodesign USA. A Biodesign beach sculpted pool is crafted with beach entries, customized seating areas, and swimming zones, and they all can be personalized to your swimming needs. The Biodesign swimming pool is meant to immerse you in your surrounding environment. The illusion of a truly beautiful beach can be created and extended onto the patio area, creating one seamless shore environment. Let them help you turn your dream backyard escape into reality with an eco-friendly, more durable, less time, and less expensive to maintain, totally customizable pool. To learn more about turning your dream into a reality, please visit their website at www.yourbackyardbeach.com. All right, there is the magic baby of the pool. It's not a pool. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. I'm not <laughs> the biggest fan. But you need to make sure you check out this website. Go see them. Um, it is going to be awesome <clears throat> to do that. Now, see, you put this question up here, George. I don't know if you have your glasses on. You can do this because we are going to answer this, Did okay, you... on why do they look so confused. Huh? Was that, a, was that a dig or you actually wear glasses? No, we, he and I were talking about it before. Yeah. I, just, I just got my NFLPA um, cards where I can go get me some free vision, uh, some right. testing, some glasses and this kind of stuff. And I was trying to make sure that he had it, and he just reminded me that he's already taking advantage of the perks that, I've been do it, on, that I'm slow on. So he's got some extra large uh, contacts <laughs> Extra, extra large. The size head that he got, you know, he got to put some. Oh, hey, no. <laughs> there's a three but meters. But I can't jumper. see. I can't see out of so I got to take them off. <laughs> <laughs> so that's crazy. So let me get back to uh, some of these deals. What I was going to, right? And we're going to answer this question. So you keep that on hold. All right. Okay. So the, the explosive plays. This is where it got to me. Alabama had. Nine explosive runs. We're calling them explosive runs. Ten, ten yards or more. They had nine. Okay. Um, Michigan only had three. So that seemed like it would have been favorable for us. But on the explosive passes, that's 15 yards or more. Bama only had one, which I thought we might end up some more with that. And we we'll kind of go into this on how why the price blocking probably didn't work. Michigan ended up having six. So when we get down the analytics of this, JT will love this statistical type of stuff because everybody, all the average yard, the target passes by both teams were like 8.6 for Alabama and 6.0. So it's yards after catch, missing tackles, things after that nature. Both teams had 13 possessions, right? But we gave up seven sacks and some bad snaps. I don't know if we call those snaps, snack, uh, sacks or not. Okay, so those are some of the stats we need to keep in mind with this. So, let's go ahead and answer that question, JT. Put that back up there All real right, fast, and we'll uh, uh, you can read it, and then we're gonna let yeah. George. It answer says, it uh, "Why did we look so confused in the first half? Is it players not adjusting or bad calls? Why aren't we consistent every week? Not the same team that played Georgia." Yeah, so just kind of digging in, digging in it from a coach's perspective, and even more specific than that, speaking from the trenches, you know, I think what you saw was you saw Michigan do a really good job of keeping Bama in a bind. And here's what I mean by that: keeping them in a bind, meaning making them have to think at the point of attack who what their responsibilities were. And when you do that, you this is what you get, regardless of the talent that you might have. So if you're unsure about what we're doing, what's the call, exactly who we have, you're going to see even some of the greatest players look like this is their first time doing it. And that was one of the things I said looking at the first half of play is, wow, Michigan's really doing a really good job of in the most critical situations keeping – Bama's front in a bind, and they did it the entire game, especially when it mattered, which ended up being a difference in the game. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I do need to go and tell everybody we're we're going to use a different format with this. Normally, we have all talk and then all video at the end. I feel like we need to mix both of these in here at the same time so that you guys can kind of see 
about this. Okay, you good with that, Mr. Producer and JT? Yeah, uh, yeah. Just, you know, just give me the cues that. and I'll, uh, I'll get it going. Okay, so then uh, with that, if you can pull up uh, at, at the first play, this is um, early in the game, uh, and you can see their defense alignment. <laughs> oh yeah, this is this is the one I was talking about pre-show. This right mm-hmm. here. Yep. So I think we might have picked the same uh, type of play. But anyway, uh, if you go ahead and let it run, I think this one ends up in a a sack, right? Yep. So you can see him uh, get. Yeah, we might have. Oh, we might, I, I think I picked this play too. Whoops. All right, we'll we'll skip it when, yeah. we, when we get. That's okay. Okay. Uh, so if you go to the back end, or we'll go ahead and let it get to the other end. So. Um, I want to get George, Coach Hageman, to talk to us about this on what the line. So if if we could do. take that back to if we could take that back to the start, JT, really quick. You want the uh, you want the wide yeah, copy? Go to the go go to the wide copy. Go to the wide copy really quick. So if you look at the formation, you got two by two, meaning you have two receivers on both sides, and you got a back end pro formation. Okay, r- let it run. So stop it right there, JT. So if you stop it right there, this is what you see. You see an overload on the right side. Okay, so from a quarterback's perspective, from an offensive line's perspective, we know that we only have five to block whomever's in our box. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, instantly, this has to be a hot route. This has to be a hot route. That's number one. The second thing you got to look at, when we do get to the end zone, you'll see that there was confusion on the right side as to exactly how we were supposed to pick up the coverage. Even with that being said, you got one more coming than we can block. So we had to take the hot route on this. Okay, take it to this, take it to take it to the end zone copy, if you will. All right, we'll let this run and flip over here in a second. Yeah, it will flip. Here we go. Boom. So stop it right here. So if you stop it right here again, so here's 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 the thing about it. At this moment, there needs to be communication about exactly how we are going to pick up whomever comes. So with this, I ran this back a few different times. I never saw the communication between the front. Did anybody anybody identify? Nobody pointed it, right? I was looking away from There was no identification. There was no identification. So right here, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, this has to be a slide. This has to be a rip to the right side. If nothing else, just by the way they're lined up, mm-hmm. that tells me exactly what it is. Okay, run it. Yeah, you got a you got a two eye. Who is it? This is a this is a four eye. I four guess we're gonna call eye. this a nine. I mean, there, there, there's a whole nine. man right here. Right. Right. So and then there's nobody on, on, in these two gaps. So nobody here. Nobody here. So if any, even if this, even if this is a four man slide, there needs to be some. There a four or five man slide. There needs to be some communication. There was none. There was none. So it's it's confusion. It's confusion from the beginning. Okay, so run it. Back motion is out. We got one more coming. Than, one more coming than we than we need to be now. So instantly, we need to call this a rip. We need to call this a Roger. However, we're going to do it, but we don't do that. We got one free. The quarterback needs to see this. He needs to know exactly where he's going with the ball right now. And if you watched it from the from the from the sideline copy, you see the back is wide open. He can pick up seven to ten yards right there. Yeah, so do you think this is like called a big on big just when you go straight back like that? Because it looked like uh, our center started to go right and then changed his so mind. He, so, so he did. So he, so, so he did. It did look like it was big on big in the beginning. The, the interesting thing about this is the right tackle is he's in a bind regardless of what, regardless of what he does. Takes the outside guy. We got the inside guy wide open, wide open on him. He tries to take. He tries to take the the four eye, the four eye, which leaves the outside defender wide open. But then he gets caught caught in the bond because they run a stunt. He ends up blocking nobody. You gotta take one of them, though, right? You gotta take one of them. Mm-hmm. Take one of them. You gotta yeah. take one of them. But but more importantly, though, you gotta communicate which one we are going to take. Look at this. Look where the defender is. More so, more so than that, T. The mm-hmm. defender is the defender is twelve yards away. If that ball's out right now. That's one on one. That's what you want. Yeah. So I know. I know one thing we'll probably hear is, well, you know, he's, and this is what I've noticed at least from watching this is that it seems like um, he doesn't have full field reads. He has half field reads. So his first read was 
over here. Was so, over to the left. Exactly. I mean, we can see the stripe on his helmet looking this way. He has no idea the back's even over here. Um, yeah. That's fine because if you look at Burton, this ball should be let go right on now. the sideline right now. Right now. Right now. Right. And yes, right now. he's probably going to take a hit from this corner because this corner does come down. He's probably going to take a hit. He might not get any uh, yards after the catch, but it's whatever down in three. So that's fine. Just a simple pitch and catch ball should be out right now. He hitches, you know, he's, he's waiting for Burton to get there rather than timing, you know, one, two, it's three. Timing. Uh, uh, it, 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 it should be, it should be timing. And, and it wasn't, I don't think, I don't think here's the thing. And it's nothing to take away from the young man, take away from, uh, from Milrow, but here was the difference between, his progression as a quarterback and a JJ McCarthy's uh, progression as a quarterback. And I can speak to this intimately because I also had JJ, JJ McCarthy at IMG on our national championship team. So go back, go back to that. Cause a lot of people hadn't heard what you said about that before you start talking about this. So uh, again, uh, coach Hageman was at IMG uh, as a director of football operations. I think that was what his title was. Right. Um, and so he got to be around some of the people and seeing guys when they were getting recruited and coming in. So he's actually has a pretty good story here. If you don't mind telling us about how your connection to some of the guys at Alabama. No, a absolutely. So the interesting thing is I believe there were eight players on both teams that were in the national championship game between Michigan and, and Alabama, JJ McCarthy being one Greg Crippen, who's a reserve uh, offensive lineman for, uh, uh, for Michigan, you had J.C. Latham, who's the, who's the starting right tackle, who actually just declared for the draft today uh, for Alabama. Also with Tyler Brooker, who's the starting left guard uh, at Alabama. Here, here's the thing, and, and I mean, I want to give Coach Wright, Coach Kevin Wright, uh, all the credit for this because when I started at IMG, I started as the national team offensive line coach. Two of the players that I had met when I first got there were Tyler Booker. Well, actually, I knew Tyler from coming to the Under Armour camps. And then J.C. Latham, who showed up a month before I got to IMG Academy. Here's the interesting thing. Both of them started as defensive linemen. It took me probably about a practice and a half before I ran to Coach Wright and told him, I said, listen, Coach, you've got two first-round, surefire first-round draft picks playing out of position. And he looked at me and said, he's like, they're in high school. What, what are we talking about? And I told him, I said, Coach, Tyler Booker, J.C. Latham will be first-round draft picks if they become offensive line. So to his credit, he trusted me. He allowed me to take him under my wing. We worked diligently uh, together at IMG for them to be, uh, become the players that they are. The great, the greatest thing about it is that they bought into it. They understood exactly what kind of work it was going to take to become the players that they become. But the thing about a place like IMG is when you have the opportunity to work with top tier talent like that, schools like Alabama, Michigan, the schools that compete every single year for the national championship, they want kids like that because the skills are transferable. As soon as they step on campus, they're ready to play. That's exactly what you saw with the Tyler Booker and a J.C. Latham. And on the other side, I know we're talking about Bama, but J.J. McCarthy, who showed up already as a pro, to be honest with you. And you could see the difference between the way he plays quarterback and other kids play quarterback around the country. He's just He just understands his concepts. He understands exactly what he's doing. And I think that was also the difference in the football game. Yes, sir. Well, we do appreciate that, and we appreciate the knowledge that you're bringing to Teague's Take. This is the type of stuff that we try to bring you on the show, real stuff, real talk, not just fluff. I hate when people do that, so I'm thankful for you 
Coach Hagerman, you already got people in the chat that already said, man, how do we get you to be the old line coach at Alabama? He said, we ain't paying enough money, man. He didn't pay. Hey, he didn't hey, oh, wait, wait, wait. Calm down. Calm down, man. No, calm down. Calm down. Listen, don't, please, please don't sell me short. Don't sell me short. Nick, call me. I just gave you my Twitter handle. Let's go. All right. All right. Well, we do that well. We know a lot of people that are very close to the organization and Maybe we can get your name in the hat right there. Okay, so hey, so I want to go back real quick, um, uh, because there is there was a question or a, a statement in the chat that um, does look correct, but I think when we kind of analyze it just a little bit, um, we may have some differing opinions. Um, so John O'Connor says, from this look, should have run it to the left. In in this view, um, the left of the offense obviously right um because what he's seeing is these these two open gaps um which looks fine from the pre-snap but the post-snap picture is very different they're going that way they're slanting right. that going way. that way they're slanting that way right That's right. right so and, now and every and here here's i didn't mean to cut you off jt but here's the thing most times when you see an overload there has to be a replacement Mm -hmm. there, there has to be a replacement. Now, I know from the initial part of the snap, looking at that, you're saying, well, why didn't they run something to the left? Well, two things. They didn't have a check. Number two, you see the back, you see the back scatting out the backfield. And number three, you got to understand, you got 25 seconds to get this playoff. And if you notice, most of what they did, they did towards the end of the play clock. So it was, it's almost impossible to make a check in that type of situation. Uh, yeah, yeah, because I mean, what, they're still moving around, right? You still got guys who snaps about to go, and now you got the back going. It's we're already too late, but you you also, I guess, you never know who who's actually coming, right? Because this could be um, a sim or a creeper where this dude drops out, he goes here, he stays in this gap. Maybe they just slide back over. He reaches inside, and I don't know. I think there's somebody standing out here. Maybe they send him. But but again, uh, again. So the only my only pushback pushback with that JT is this: a we got a month to figure this out. Mm -hmm. Like it was literally four weeks before they played their last game in this game. I think it was even longer than that. The other part of it is this: is that once you look at tendencies, this is probably not very different than what Michigan had already been doing to other teams. So with that being said, and it was one of the, one of the things I always look at from a line from a line coach perspective is what could we possibly get? You always have to understand what the what ifs are, what and is. you got to teach what the what ifs are because if you don't, you'll have situations like this where a big game, critical period, something's not going to get picked up. Why? Because we just didn't rep it enough. Hey, Coach uh, Hegeman, let okay. me let me let me tee you up again real quick because we we kind of briefly talked about this before. Uh, Ed Adams says, do you think it's a center problem for not communicating the four-man slide? Because I don't know if Milrow calls a protection like Bryce did. So he doesn't call the protections. Okay, when you say like Bryce did, you got to understand, we're talking about Bryce Young. That's number one, right? We're talking about somebody that had full command of the offense. And Milrow, he's somebody that's still learning the progressions. In my opinion, and again, this is armchair quarterback coaching after the game is over. In my opinion, I think you still keep the signals coming off of the sideline. That way the line knows what they have to do. All Jay has to do is figure out exactly what his reads are, and we go from there. In my opinion, I think that what you saw was too much probably put on the quarterback, it not necessarily being translated with, with the center and the center giving it to the rest of the line so it's figured out in time. Well, that's To me, I saw that all game, and that's – that's the one of the things I feel like you just can't have in a well, critical and I, situation. And I don't know that this is true or not, but based upon that, what I heard the players talking about and Nick Saban talking about is how they had to change the way they were getting their calls in because they're worried about signal pe people looking at hands or signals or something of that nature. Not saying they're cheating, okay, but uh, it was saying they were Great point. they were conscious of hey, we we need to do something different so they're not. Um, knowing exactly what we're doing okay so let's uh can we go to the second um pass protection um one i would like to get his analysis on on this one as well they actually sent six um uh, from the back end uh or on their back end they actually 
played zone behind it. So we talked yep. about this a little bit before last week. We were saying, hey, that they probably weren't going to play that much man. And so I don't know if this is confusing to um, Milro or not, but they're short of zone again. Yeah, so I want so you guys to probably playing a little bit of hot coverage here, or what I'd like to call eyes, but. Mm. Well, it goes into mm. what you're saying, too. If you go back before we talk about the the rush, if you look at um, Nye Black, 84, who's a tight end, who's attached. Yeah, let me put a let me put a circle on, on him because yep. he's the hot the, read. That's the hot read right there. Correct. And when you know you didn't got enough or you're getting too much pressure, you can see he's about – he puts his hands up, like, immediately, like he's immediately. kind of waiting for the ball, like, Hey, I'm here because they are one zone short. They, I mean, he's yep. Throw open. it right now. Right now, no uh, one's there but the yeah. referee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's a uh, one piece from the back end, and I know JT was talking about um, that maybe a little bit pre-show, I believe. Uh, yeah. Well. And again, you know, just looking at something like this, you got three by you got three by one. Again, even if you even if it has to be understood by the quarterback where to go with the football right away just by front just by front with with meaning i understand that my offensive line has these guys that are in the box who's the one that i'm responsible for so in this in this case in this specific case he's the end man on the line of scrimmage is who the quarterback is responsible for he's got to know immediately where that ball has to go Obviously, it's the tight end coming across the middle. Nobody there to tackle him but the referee. Yep. Okay. So that that's one piece, and we had talked about the rush and could he get up the middle of the field. There was nowhere for him to go, and I think he wanted to try to take off a little bit. But let's talk about what they're doing up front, um, Coach, you know, uh, because uh, we do see that the back is going to try to take number 15 off the other side. So um, I guess – he, I, don't, I don't know what you how so, you so pay it pay it go go back go back to the top pay attention though to exactly what Michigan did an excellent job of all game long which very rarely did you ever see them do a straight rush they never did a oh, straight yeah. rush most no, they're always most gonna rip what, to one gap or the other always and then bring always. somebody and loop somebody back two bar around so you so they number one that is their defensive scheme number two the other part of it is is that just from a coaching perspective you could tell that they knew that this gave Bama problems. And it did. It gave Bama problems all year long. So now you, you think about this, to go back to what you talked about, T, thinking that there was going to be an issue of getting of getting their signals figured out by, by putting, up, putting up signals on the sideline. That's something different that you're going into a game with. Knowing that pass protection has been an issue for you all year long. And then number three, having some athletes on the other side of the football that can execute a scheme that they've been doing all year long would do nothing but create these types of issues. And that's exactly what you see. Okay. So how do you, how would you look at this though? And I'm looking from a purely just a, a, as a defensive back, right? I, I yep. seem like I saw a guy on a guy, even with Down the guy. twist yep. by the guy. So um, is that a positive play for the offensive line and it's really more on the quarterback um because they did pass uh they pass it up they pass it off on the by. left which is which is probably the best you can do you see the back trying to track over this is purely in my in my position we've got a guy on a guy we've got a positive pocket what i mean by the pot what by a positive pocket is is that he can step up in the pocket and he can make his throw you see the edges are protected here. Listen, this is where it's never going to be completely clean, but in this type of situation, again, it's recognition yeah, of where the ball has to go right now. Yeah, it's about as good as it gets. Okay, and that's what I thought. So when I put this on here, I just thought it was a good job of them actually passing it off because they didn't pass off all the time, and I didn't know. This one, it just looked like they had pretty good vision, and I wanted to make sure that we pointed that out um, because, you know, you got to get rid of the ball too. Uh, sometimes to help those guys out, um, right? All right. Absolutely. Uh, but we still saw the cover three on the back end. Uh, Ooh. All right. Ooh. This is excellent. This is excellent. This is excellent play calling by Michigan. Right here. <laughs> so let's set this up. One of the, let's go back and talk about So one of the things that we did give a lot of love to was uh, Blake 
Corum. We spent more time talking about his run game, uh, which I think we did a very good job of shutting him down. I think it was, uh, what did he have? I think it was 89 yards. 19 carries, 89 yards or something. It wasn't, you know, a blockbuster. But he had two big passes that yeah. stung us. Uh, yeah. And this is one of them. So there's two pieces that we need to talk about this. One, maybe the design from the offense, but we got to talk about how this matched up on the secondary. And I'd be interested. So me and JT don't really talk a whole lot about some of this stuff beforehand, which I think Actually, <laughs> helps a little bit for this. Not, not, a, not <laughs> really at all beforehand. No, we, we don't talk about it all. So we give you our, our takes on this kind of stuff. We just kind of share the plays. And yeah, so he in can case put the audience up. doesn't know, most of the time I am seeing this for the first time and, and giving you what I think right now. It's definitely not rehearsed. That's right. We, we, so, um, but one of the things that we've always talked about with our defense is not covering the running backs out of the backfield. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Now, they, they did cover the back. I'm not saying it was like every single play. We had some plays on here. But this one, I mean, he, you can see linebackers pointing and saying, hey, there he goes. But Yeah. Who you got? Who got him? Nobody goes. And so, uh, first of all, let's talk about our the guys up front. We had a four man rush, and I let George give his uh, opinion on this. I think we ran a twist on both sides. Yeah, uh, we ran TEs on both sides. Their offensive line looked they were like they were ready for it and kind of picked it up. Anything alarming there, one way or the other, or George up front? No, no. The, th- the thing of the thing about it, and I thought Michigan. This is where I feel like. I was the most surprised about the football game. Now, I will say this. I don't think that Bama's D-line is, has been the best it's ever been this year. But it also, going into the game, I did not think that Michigan's offensive line would have handled the defensive front as well as they did. And a lot of this has to do with individual play, but mostly scheme, right? So, yeah, you look at this, you see a double twist, both sides, they pick it up, the back's wide open. You can't ask for better than that. Okay, so now I want to get to JT on this back end, all right? So at first, I thought it was cover three kind of-ish because both the backers are kind of sitting. But then our left corner lets a guy go, so that's what I'm thinking, right. three. But our right corner goes with the man-to-man, and the slot mm-hmm. guy goes with corner. the man-to-man. I think man. it's corners. So I'm kind of – you know, okay, and it could be quarter. So in that case, so anytime we have stuff like this, and I'll try to explain this the best I can, and JT can elaborate on this. When you have people that are running with men up the field, wide receivers, if the number three, whoever ends up being the number three guy, goes across the formation, the backer has to pick him up. He has to. He's got to run through traffic. He's got to do this stuff. And this case is about to be number two. So one of our backers has to get through there and we're basically pushing. So they got drags and they got all this stuff coming, right? So somebody has to go through. And I think that's why we see the the finger point, but we don't actually go through. Another one that looks like, it seems like what George has been saying before. You see, look at the point of the finger right there. He's pointing, yep. but they're both yep. standing right next to each other. Um, so it's another piece of confusion. And I, I don't, I don't know. JT, what do you think about this? Well, um, it's a one, it's a pick play, um, which I hate, but it's in the rules. <laughs> so you can continue to do it. Cause because these two dudes right here. The tight end was trying to get to the backer. They are yeah. not running a route. Um, but that's that's fine. I I'm really interested to understand what the coverage is. Because the way I'm looking at it is like if everybody's zoning across, Kool Aid thinks he has number one. Like Malachi both. took two. No, I'm talking about like actual number one and nope. the number one receiver. But I guess where my my lack of like what the coverage actually is is I'm trying to figure out because like you you my instincts are like you don't have to chase this dude inside because look where he's at. 
he, you are a corner that's lined up inside the hash marks. Right. I, yeah, I feel like you should you should already be thinking, all right, this dude is probably going out, and then he's not, right? So he releases, he goes up the field. You don't have to necessarily be on top of this. I feel like he could have kind of went here. So you feel like he could have trailed a little bit. Is that what you right. got to say? Because, because now his threat is if this dude, if he's running in, like the threat is the corner route. And you can stay outside. And you can sink under this and and make JJ McCarthy right. have to throw this at the pylon. Right. But by doing that, which this is what I call a sail technique, if he actually sails out this way and the back comes across, not saying that you're gonna get a PBU, but this is this is a tackle that you can that you can make. You give your op- oh. you give yourself an opportunity to make a tackle and be able to sink on this if this is your problem. Because he's coming to get the safety. These two are just trying to wall off the linebacker. And now yeah. you're leaving this guy here, like you said, having to run across the formation, and he's already two yards behind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it ain't going to happen. That's what, And he's right. And so when I was saying three, what it should have been, but quarters is probably – Right, as in JT says, it's the way that our safety. I said three just because the free safety was sitting right there in the middle. But he could be looking to try to get this over uh, by number one. Yeah. So uh, just just a thought, and just just this is where my mind goes um, in general when when I'm looking at this and thinking that they're at least playing. At but least look what Kool Aid ends up. Kool Aid right. ends up on the other side, though. The side, some yeah, kind quarters. of quarters principle here when you yeah. have trips is um, he's got number three vertical. He's got number two vertical. Well, he actually ends up moving in here. Uh, so let me let me get to the the final set right here. Okay. So. He's thinking, I've got number three if he goes vertical. I've got two if he goes vertical. I've got one if he goes vertical. And he his rule is probably mess technique, M-E-S, man except short. So that means if he runs his drag right here, I'm zoning off. I'm looking for something. I'm looking for something trying to hit me in the end zone. Um, but now these three guys have to communicate or they have to figure out how to sift because we know that Saban likes the pattern match. So... If you get two across and three across, and this is maybe what Kool-Aid's thinking is like, now I'm manned up on one because these guys are going inside. But now if they're all going, you got to trust one that somebody's coming back out here because that's how it always works. Football is not that hard. You got three guys going this way. Somebody's going to come out. Um, And there's only one receiver over here. So you've got one, two, three, four guys to handle three guys coming across. And if you leave, which is what happens, you know, we talk about football math all the time. If you leave and you're the one guy that's going to be able to defend the flat and you leave and you go this way. Nobody out there. You know, God save the queen, I guess. They got to come. So, anyway, I just thought that was interesting because, so when we're talking about the three reasons, so the first reason of why we lost the game, right? So, Hegemans was basically that we were put in a bind. It was one of them, right? Can I say that? Uh, yeah. Right? Um, it has a lot to do with coaching. My, mine going there for some of these plays was also I thought we had too many sacks. Um, so, our offensive line play, we showed a couple um, of those. JT, what was one of yours that you would like to divulge at this time, if any of? Uh, of yeah, you? I mean, we we kind of talked about it already. It, it was that, um, to me, Jalen Milrow doesn't look like he knows where his hot reads are. Okay. All right. Not knowing where hot reads. That's good. Okay. And so my second one, the reason why I wanted to point this out, because I thought that we did not cover the back in the most critical times, this right. is right here on the goal line. We know they're going to try to get the ball to Blake Cohen, whether he's going to run it, throw it, or something. He's their red zone guy. Um, and then we're going to show you another play right after this where he had a, a really bad, uh, big uh, pass reception. Um, but I want to see if you guys want to go ahead and tell us the second reason, um, George Hegeman, 
uh, second yeah, reason so, why you think we're in a loss. No, so so my reasons my reasons go one on top of the other. So being in the bind, it normally makes. Now I always look at this. Keep in mind, this game went into overtime, so this wasn't this wasn't so lopsided that what we're seeing caused one team to just do do things so much better than the other. This game went in the over went into overtime. So here's what it is: it comes down to the most crucial things that are nine times out of 10, some of the most simplest things. So we were talking about bad snaps earlier. Like this is one thing that you just cannot have up front because it throws off timing, it throws confidence off. And when you need it the most, when it needs to be the most simplest thing that you do on offense and you don't do it right, it kills you at the most critical period of the game. We talked about two bad snaps that happened back to back Back-to-back, back, which totally killed your momentum, and then the last play of the game, you look at a bad snap that threw off timing on a play that had it had he gotten the snap right, he has a, a very great chance of scoring. Whoa, 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 don't get ahead of us now. Don't get ahead of us now. Listen, you know, you know me. I'm, I'm passionate about these things, man. Don't get ahead of us now. Slow down, slow down. Okay, so – Yes, and we'll we'll get to that. I think JT has a couple of clips of some bad uh, stats, but let's go ahead and run this other pass um, to Blake Corum. I think it would have been right after the one that you just showed, JT, from my set of clips. Uh, yeah, should be right after this. This is a third and two, was it? Three. Well, third and three. The scoreboard says third and three, I think. Yeah, but so third two, and three, three, whatever, third and short. Very similar type formation here that you just saw on the other pass play. <laughs> Honestly, um, move him over, but I mean he's headed yeah. to the flat right now, and yeah, right now. I, I don't, I don't, I don't. Nobody knows who has. Him. Yeah, so I expect yeah, again just basic well, rules here well, again, camp rules. When you're gonna try to play zone and pattern match things, um, and this is at least in my experience, this is very hard to get linebackers to remember because they're always looking at something else. Um, yep. But again, just taking quarters principles again because it's the same look that we had down the goal line, right? It's actually the same formation, just they're in minus territory instead of in the red zone. Um, They've got the back is it's, it's three by one and the back is set weak, right? So this is not quads yet. Uh, yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, then when the motion happens or the shift, whatever you want to call this, now it's quads. Linebackers. Quads right now. Now, now it's quads. So yep. this guy Ooh. right now, I'm I'm always telling him, hey. You have to say you have to tell these guys out here that it's a push alert, and what it's, this means, what the push alert means is, because usually if it's two by two, if it's two by two and this back leaves, he goes like this or he goes like this. I'm saying, hey, linebackers got that. Right. So, so let me let me help um, with that. So JT is talking about uh, our backer and the safety who's uh, to the left of him. I think it might be uh, Caleb. Yeah, this is Caleb sure. Downs. That's Caleb. So basically, he's saying those two have the tight end and they're running back, and they should be passing those off. But he should be talking, saying, "Hey, if this back goes out the flat and the tight end comes inside, I'm going to take him." I think that's what he's saying. Yeah, that's, I'm actually thinking you know, it's probably right. supposed to be Malachi, but I, I don't, I don't know. Um, but it's yeah, it's but check be it out. You see, two. it's going to be yeah, one of these two. And based upon what happens when you let it roll, you'll see. Our safety start to squeeze and then change his mind, but he's picked by about that time, um, or not comes off. So go ahead and let it run. You look at uh, Caleb uh, Downs. He start to squeeze on the tight end, which number thirty picks up. Yeah, because I again, I think I, I think, think this is their stress concept again, or they they actually probably run stubby or special, because um, that's usually what they base out of when they get trips. Um, which means again, he's got vertical of number three. He's got this guy. 
he's got two out and up, and then he's got one um, we call a man outside and deep or man on demand. But that's all negated when you get a back escaping out. You say, we're pushing. He should be yelling. I don't know what his keyword is. We say push, push, push. And we're telling him, all right, I'm pushing over my zone this way, so I'm going to end up picking up number three. You need to now pick up number two coming across, and you need to bump out and take the flat. You have, you've got the back. Yep. Mm-hmm. And again, it's, it's just a lot of thought of process. You got to see it. If, if ever, but it's what we talked about all year long. If you're not on the same page, big plays happen like this, <laughs> and so no one covers him. Here, let's let it go, and he catches it, and he runs the ball from 35. And this is late in the game where if we just stop them, we yeah. we win if we force yeah. them into a field goal. But that is a huge play at the most critical point. Um, I think the other – if I can jump in, I'm going to definitely let you guys do the coverage thing. But the one thing I want you to pay attention to is this, is pay attention to, number one, what's happening up front. There's not a lot to sift through up front. Mm-hmm. Right? There's absolutely not. I mean, we know it's 515, number one. So here's the other thing. The other part of it, too, go back to J.J. McCarthy. This is somebody back foot goes down. He knows exactly where to go with the football. That's the that's also the difference. But with not having a whole lot to sift through up front in the beginning, he's he already knows who has who. So I'm covered. My back's probably going to be wide open. As soon as the back foot hits, hits the ground, the ball's out. Okay, so JT, is there any other plays before we show the last play of the game that we need to talk about to, to close the show out with? Is there so I know you up downloaded some more or uploaded some more? Yeah, um, uh, let me you may want to show. Let me try to readjust here because my mine is a little bit bigger for some reason. So let me let me get this bit up so, the way it's supposed to. Look at our producer putting in work. On the fly, live, live. Yeah. <laughs> live. Live. yeah. Well, we don't go back and edit nothing. Don't change nothing. Which see what you get, though. Yeah, I ain't got time to do all that. So, no, I don't that. Um, okay. So this is another one. We're just talking about hot reads here. You get the play action, Boom. um, and you gotta know when when you got somebody in your face, you got space. You got a whole logo's worth of space. And if you feel like you can't hit that, if you say, hey, I'm, I can't I can't get it over this backer and under the safety, which yeah, I think that. you surely should be able to make that pass. Uh, you got this guy <laughs> right here. Just even if he doesn't break a tackle, you know, he get a couple, at least get you second and six. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Now, I want to um, – uh, that is a great point, but I want to hear George's take – on Coach George's take on this um, move down here at the bottom too, because I don't know if there was some confusion again. Uh, if you want to show the back end, uh, yeah, the, the back end is better to see the guy that um, actually makes the play uh, because our left tackle and left guard, or well, it's really the left tackle. Yep. But I think he's in a four eyes. So again, it's I don't yeah. know. How hard this is on the tackle to take this inside charge, and how does fifty two know which way he's supposed to go? If he's supposed to go help the center, or if he's supposed to help the tackle? That's my. Again, it, it all starts. It all question. should start with what the call was. Right now, in this case, if you look, you got the center who's manned up here. Right, he has a guy right over his nose. So he can't help. He has to. He has to go one on one. The the protection has to be slid out to the left here, but for whatever reason, there's confusion. There, there, there ends up there ends up being confusion in terms of who has who, and then by that time, you've already seen the the D lineman make penetration here, and he ends up getting pushed into the quarterback's lap. So so so, so this is how this how it all goes together. As soon as JC's color, I guarantee you his eyes comes off of his read. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. No, absolutely. Yeah. He's, he's I thinking can, I got to get out it. right now. I got to get out right now. So I'm I'm no longer thinking about what I have. I see color. I got to go. Right. And you got a high low on the on the linebacker right here. 
You got uh, 23 looking up the deep route, which is the one he should be taking because Lord knows if he if he had if Milro had time and could and he steps up on this one, this is the throw you do not want to give up. Right. So he's got his eyes on the right guy. But he's trying to he's trying to leave. So, you know, this is this is nitpicking, right? This this is nitpicking. The other part about quarterback play that I appreciate is if I understand exactly what my coverage is and something breaks down, it's always the what if that I have to know if I'm going to be not just a good player, but an, but an elite player. Because in this case, he sees color and he escapes to no man's land as opposed to doing exactly what you just said, JT, being able to step up in the pocket wide. Here's what, here's what I'm talking about. I know I have this running back over here to have to help with any leak on the yeah, outside. So you, you're talking about going right here. Yeah, so step up in the pocket, step up in the pocket if I know where my reads are. Now, again, this is nitpicking. This is me at, in, in my house three days after the game looking at it on film. But again, these are the things that make the difference in a big game like this. Okay. All right. JT, you got another one? Yeah. Yeah. Um, So this is uh, this was just a positive here. We talked about uh, running QB counter correctly. Yes, finally okay. hit it up in there, didn't yep. he? Good Straight up the field. Good, Good lord! Happen when when you actually follow your pullers, uh, follow which your puller, is, man. which is going to be a recurring theme. Uh, that's I think that's what the authors call foreshadowing, um, because at the end of the game, we did not follow a puller. Man, I'm like, like, you just gave us a softball toss to go right to the play. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Go ahead. back. Uh, go ahead and talk about No, let's uh, finish talking about that one because some people will probably miss that. I want want them to see the play that you just talked about on pullers, right? So we've been talking about this on the show too, uh, Coach Hagerman, um, mm. about a lot of times – Milro, when he had the pullers, he still would try to run outside or around the pullers. He wasn't trusting going inside. Right. And this is the very rare chance um, that JT's showing to you here that while these guys pull and and wrap, he actually hits it up in the hole and doesn't yeah. try to run around those guys. Now he's one. So it's a, it's a couple things. It's a couple things. If I go go back to the front, JT. If you go back to the front, there's a pre-read on this, right? There's a pre-read on this. If you look at this, I've got a one technique to this side. Oh, this is this is a play. Okay. I'm saying this this is a play right now. If I get this down block, I know I got the puller coming. This is nothing between this. There's the shit. I should be able to hit my head on a referee's hat right now because of the way the alignment is right now. So that's an easy read for the quarterback. Okay. Yeah. So he's just saying block down. That guy jumps all the way outside but gets pinned anyway. So pinned it's a great play. Right. So we want to see you into this and why I think uh, if you want to go back to uh, JT, if you want to go ahead, we're at 915 now. So okay, uh, if you want to go ahead and go to the last play, I know it'll take us a little bit of time to get through this. On what happens uh, and why I said I thought the last play of the game was the right call. While I was at the game, I was sitting in the stands, and I do have to say that I, I was telling Consuela and the Michigan fans right next to me, there's no way we don't put the ball in Milrow's hands. I don't see how that would be possible, and I was expecting empty, which they basically end up in. Yeah. said, hey, give him some kind of chance to just count and start looking. Do he throw it? Do he run it? Which way does he run it? Something. And so immediately afterwards, I started getting texts, what a trash call and all this kind of stuff, and I don't feel that way. Um, about this play because the play was there. It was there. It, 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 was, it was there. It was. It was. It was there, man. Now I'm going to nitpick again, right? And I've been called the homer for this because I am. I'm probably a little bit of a homer. Here, here's the thing: you have. I just feel like the play was wrong, run the wrong way. That's my. That's my only. That's my only. Hold on. When you say about. wrong way, you mean direction or you mean you should have went to? He should have went to J.C. Latham instead of Booker. Went, Think about what, no, 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 think, that's that's not what I'm saying, JT. What I am saying is utilize both of their strengths. The best puller is Tyler Booker. 
the best down blocker is JC Latham. So create, so create the duo on on the right side. Have have Booker push out. Let Proctor be the hinge guy on the back side. But you put JC Latham in a position where he's hinging. Booker Booker is Booker and Proctor are now creating creating the uh, the duo the duo block on the front side. But even with that, it does not work if you don't snap the ball correctly. Here's what kills the play. All right, after all that being said, the thing that kills the play is the timing of it. The ball is low. The ball is a bit to the right. He has to regroup. Yeah, because he his might feet. actually have a. He might actually. This might actually be an RPO where he's supposed to at least look. Look, look and see over if here. it's there. Right. Look. Look and see if it's there. But he can't. All that gets thrown out when the snap is low. Now all he's doing is reacting. And you see him do what? The same thing he did out in the field, run straight up the field. He does not look at the hole at all because he can't. No, so go back to that. Oh, this is a good angle right here because what you need Great to angle. see is, is um, well, first I need you to see number 25, right? Um, is he actually take off, takes off with the running back. back. So yep. that takes one guy out of there. Uh, if you can head back a little bit, and this is where I think you're right on the bad snap. I can see myself panicking a little bit too if I was a quarterback and, and that's the, enough. The and you're just like, oh my God, bad snap is fourth down. You got too many things going on. And to be in a big stage like this, to have the bad snap and the most critical play of the game, uh, I can see to his credit to, to, to Miro's credit, he is saying secure the football. That is what you're saying. Secure the football, which he did. But now, with that being said, his eyes aren't on the puller anymore. If he follows 77 is all we're mm -hmm. trying to say. Because the, other, the, the safety ran up the field. He ran up the field. He's not yeah, zero. The if the safety takes a good angle and, like, surfs and comes right off the edge, then there is no play. But he didn't. He left the gap he way almost too wide. It. Can you, yeah, show, he almost can you draw it. that up, JT, on what we're talking about? That guy to the left of the screen, he runs up the field yeah, too so much. If he, if he takes a path that looks uh, let me get my arrows if he takes a path that looks more like this correct you shrink the gap because you have right. down blockers and you want to make gaps as, as small as possible but he's he gonna get blocked anyway 77 if he comes in there that tight but anyway he yeah. his angle is like this he's running yep. past uh the ball carrier and ends up not mattering but and then if you look at the, I don't know, that's number nine. I mean, he's he's squeezing so tight. Seventy-seven has him wrapped. He has him wrapped, I, I right? Because this this usually would be this usually would be a kick out, right? right. He's usually, he's trying to get in here and then push him out that way. But nine ducks inside, so now you don't have to do that. You can just you well, can just wall you, him off. You know what George Hegerman always said that I heard him say a lot was get into the line on the pull. Get into, get the, line. into, get the, into line, the line. Right, man. He's trying line. to hit him with that left shoulder. But if he squeezes yep. down in there like that, I don't know what you guys' terminology is that once you can't get in there, just it, I mean, it's it's run. It's, it's I think everything else is run perfectly. The, the 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 safety doesn't make the play. If anything, he gets dragged into the end zone. Okay. But again, He's thrown off by the snap. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate because that's not even his footwork. That's the thing. That's not even the quarterback's footwork on this play. But no. his footwork has to get adjusted because he's trying to secure the football. Okay, one last little thing, and just because I see it on this on the the hinge block, I don't want to spend too much time on it. But sixty-five on right tackle. When you're trying to okay. do these hinge blocks and you have something like this, what 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 kind of coaching you give him? At this so point. and this this was this was my exact words to JC after the game. Like he literally called me like ten minutes after they got back into the in, got back into the locker room. So if I'm hinge blocking and I'm hinging in the field, I know I have time right to to secure the B gap because that's what it that's exactly what a hinge block is. I'm securing to the B gap or I'm securing to the next defender inside. Then I'm turning and looking back outside. The difference between being in the field or being in short yardage and goal line is everything happens that much faster. So I have to I have to shorten up my footwork, shorten up my shorten up my vision, and be ready for anything coming off coming off of the side. 
this to me is a moot point for a lot of different reasons. Could he be firmer on this? Absolutely. However, he's also not expecting the quarterback to still be right side of the line of scrimmage, right, right yeah. side of the formation on this either. So unfor- a lot of unfortunate things happen on a play that all started with the snap being too low and to the right. Yep. So, uh, and I thank you for saying that because I was listening to some other people talk about this and they were actually trying to blame 65. And I was like, no, I don't think so. I think what you said, the snap and the exit angle of Jada Milrow because of the bad snap, not getting behind the puller. If he's behind the puller, I mean, that guy's probably not going to tackle him zero anyway. He's probably going to run through the tackle if he's going to run close. Yeah. uh, And he's going to muscle his way in there. So, that is why I think this is was the right call. We just right call. Didn't, did not Correct. execute it um, the way that we should have. So, uh, all right. So my three reasons were uh, too many sacks, bad snaps, which I think were um, crucial. Oh, they're like sacks. They kill, <laughs> right. they, they kill uh, you, man. I guess it goes down. What do they? What do they go down as? Just because they don't really know the play. It's just a negative rushing play. Uh, yeah, it goes as negative yards yeah. for the quarterback. Negative yards, which is you know, a, which is what they should do in the NFL. By the way, what do you mean? In college, if you get sacked, it's negative rushing yards for the quarterback, and it also counts as negative rushing yard, negative rushing team yards too, because you went backwards. Uh, but in the NFL, is they just they just call them sack yards, and they they keep them off the quarterback stat sheet, and they put them somewhere else, and it doesn't go against any of the rushing stats, which is bonkers to me. It should at least if it ain't if it ain't if they don't want to call it rushing stats because it was a pass play, then it should be negative pass yards. That's the way I feel about it. Yeah. Okay, so let's just recap our, our three reasons on why we lost. And if you guys can short it down to however you can, whatever you want. Mine were the sacks. Right, which has a lot to do with the O line play and all that. Too many seven sacks in a very critical game like this, too uh, too much. And then bad snaps. Right, but you had another three of those at least that were negative um, in some capacity that put you in a lot of negative yardage right there. So the snaps were another reason that we lost the game. And my third one was not covering the running back in the most critical times. I think I went with that third one mainly because we. I think Jay. I know we've been talking about this for two to three years, JT. Yeah, multiple man, coordinators. I can, and yeah, man. I yeah. was saying, hey, that ain't at some point. It ain't the coordinator. It's there's a there's a constant. <laughs> oh, there you go. You talk about Marvin Constant. I see what you're saying there. <laughs> but anyway, uh, okay. Yeah, no so, pun intended, but if yeah. if the shoe fits, that's right. And JT, I let you go second. Your three were my or three um, were. Obviously, bad snaps that'll that'll kill you. You had a um, you had a pretty good drive going, and then all of a sudden it's first and ten, and the next play it's second and twenty three, and then the next play it's it's third and the third moon. And um, so that's that's an issue. Um, then you have I'm gonna go with lack of communication because you're up seven points with four minutes to go and you you gave up 13 in the first quarter or in the first half and then you gave up no points in the third quarter and now with four four and a half minutes to go uh what what what's Saban say you, you let him run through us like shit through a tin horn or whatever it was he said when they played uh <laughs> uh Georgia Southern all them years ago um and then the third one is Milro not knowing where his hot route is because any time that you bring six and you're playing zone behind it, somebody's open. It might not be all the way down the field. It might just be a little two yard dump off pass, whatever, but somebody's going to be open. Uh, and especially if you bring seven by math, somebody has to be open if the back's getting out. So, not knowing where the ball is supposed to go and not throwing the ball on time is another is it those are drive killers as well so those are my three the lack of okay. communication on defense bad snaps and Milro not knowing where 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 his uh hot reads are george hegeman your three
three, sir. Yeah, you know what? Again, I just want to preface this whole point is that this game went into overtime again, right? So it was a, it was really a close game in terms of all the things that we think that went wrong. It was st- it still came literally came down to the wire. That being said, uh, confusion was the number one thing, you know, throughout the entire game. You know, so being caught in the bind, both on offense and defense of uh, from Bama. The second thing is it's the snaps. You know, bad bad snaps. They they kill a drive. They kill confidence. You know, they they. It is the number one thing that you think from an offensive perspective that you just can't get wrong. And the the third thing, the third thing, guys, like quite honestly, it is it's just execution. It was it was just execution. I do want to throw a bonus one in there because we didn't say it the whole time, but I did think about it. Drive killers, bad snap, but man, the fumble. The fumble. Ooh, that's a big the one. Fumble. Oh yeah, I was forgot about that. Huge. Yeah. The, the fumble that was, was another huge. Another drive killer. It was. It was a drive killer. But I, again, man, listen. You got to give credit where, where credit was due. Michigan came prepared to be to be right in the most critical critical moments. I don't think you could discount that. No, I one hundred percent agree. And so uh, I think uh, Mr. Hagerman put it. Uh, the best, you know, when you talk about this and you can kind of look at this through one view or one angle um, on, on what, what what were we actually trying to say? We're we trying to say Bama played bad and all that kind of stuff. No, we weren't because um, as I stated in one of my uh, tweets on X, um, this was a very successful year for Alabama. I can sit here. I won't speak for these other two, but thinking we were going to be in the playoffs at all this year absolutely not when we lost to uh texas and then we struggled with usf and we're trying to figure out our quarterback and all this kind of stuff i'm like man we just you know i was thinking we were going to lose three games (laughs) honestly and i wasn't watching them play a and m and just kept seeing them getting better but you see them just winning close games and and going and then things just kind of went so i'm very proud of these boys uh and the coaching staff are putting this uh this season together uh, you just you know as a fan you just kind of hate that at this one particular game all these other things started happening you know right. their coaches michigan coaches did a great job but big shout out to their fans they were great and we had no issues we sat right next to a couple i don't they must have bought somebody's tickets because it was all alabama section they were right in there and they were they were cool and they were fun um but it was uh you know, a tremendous year. Um, so we're looking forward to this. As we go forward with Teague's take over the next few weeks, we're going to start to revamp and change because now we got to get into re- recruiting. And maybe we'll bring George back in to analyze some film or something. Oh, yeah, because you guys. know, because you, you, you kind of tied into that trail now. So you uh, you get to see the guys firsthand. Well, yeah. you know, him and Don yeah. Z. I got to get Don Zalati on here. Let him to come talk about a little bit of something, something. Um, but you know, well, so we'll we'll do into that, and we'll actually start showing some film on some uh, either transfers or. Uh, oh right, yeah. So we can actually find guys. film of transfers. Transfers, um, if yeah. It's the, if it's the high school guys, we're just gonna get their highlights, um, which is always fun to look at. But <laughs> you don't actually get to you don't actually get to see any problems, right? <laughs> look, <laughs> That's right. Listen, if, look, listen. If I'm if I'm a high school kid. You think I'm putting out there I can't pass block? I'm, I'm going to show you every down block, every double team, every hinge block I got. But, you know, I, you know, I will say this, though, from a from a recruiting standpoint, man, it, it would be better if you could get a kid's whole body of work to be able to make that type of decision on, especially with NIL these days. That's mm-hmm. right. You're absolutely right. So make sure y'all hit that subscribe button. Thank you for the Bama Standard for always being great partners with us, allowing us to do a simulcast with them. Man, go! they got so much stuff going on over there, right? Please, please, please give them a follow um, as well. Continue to watch both of us uh, because it's great Alabama content uh, by a lot of great people between both channels. So JT and I will be back. Um, probably next week, and then you guys are going to have to pay attention and you're going to have to have to hit the bell because we won't be on every single week um, throughout the offseason. We'll be going every other week, but we'll be bringing you more. Well, maybe maybe I need to do a poll because, I mean, we could probably just in 
in off weeks. I'm not saying that we got to go every week, but we can we can do some NFL film too. There'll be playoff games going and other things that we can just throw some stuff up there. We might as well do it. If you're asking me, the Cowboys are still in it. We got to get some people. And there's probably some other people that want to do stuff, but I know our our Cowboy followers will love some of the film because we do not break down any Cowboys film at all. Uh, mm. anymore we used to currently on the yes uh anymore uh so but that's something we're thinking about and keeping under our, our wraps on how to make that work so george hey, i love to be involved i love to be involved if you do oh well, there we go now well, me and you definitely can uh talk offline about how to make this happen and we'll do some good things around the nfl um as well big round of applause for big george one more time for coming on and spending the time uh, yeah. Yes, uh, boy. It's just like his Twitter. Y'all make sure y'all give him that George Hegeman on Twitter and Instagram. I did say that right, right? Hegeman. Yes, you did. That's spelled yes. H E G A M I N. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. All right. Well, with that, JT, we're going to go ahead and uh, no. No, John, we can't John, break down uh, Steelers film. So hey, last thing, I, then, I promise you this is the last thing because I did forget to say this. We did have a winner in our bowl. Oh, uh, right. Um, Mania. I forgot what his. Uh, I, I'll find it. I, we got to show him on screen because uh, I was meaning to tell you that he needs to, that we need to tell him that uh, if he doesn't uh, pull up a, if he, if he didn't watch the show, then he couldn't participate, but I didn't do that. So that, would, <laughs> <laughs> that, that wouldn't be fair. Okay. So he did win. Um, uh, uh, fantasy football legend or fantasy league legend or something like that. F F F L legend could be Florida legend. I don't know, but but whatever. He won the poll. Uh, the Mania um, Bowl picks um, per the chat. He gets thirty one dollars. He gets a Titan Texas shirt and uh, fifteen minutes on the podcast. So I will be um, finding him to get him on. There, John Anu Frycheck did win our three-man pick, <laughs> uh, I believe, uh, as well. He wants 15 minutes, but I don't know that we're going to give him 15 minutes because he's a Steelers fan. There he is. In the chats, yes. So there it is. I really thought I was going to be win it all. Uh, I think I took fifth in it, and I. The reason why I lost is because I picked Alabama and I picked Texas, and those two uh, killed me. But FL Legend 707 will be in touch. Congratulations to you. Uh, so let's call it a night, guys. We'll see you all next week, 8.15 p.m. Central Time, 9.15 on the East Coast. Love you guys. Thanks for everything that you do. Peace. Peace. <laughs>